My name is Ruben Shaw, and I'm an assistant professor here at the Salk Institute. So the major focus of my lab is understanding how energy balance uh, is regulated in different cells of our body, because deregulation of energy balance and the enzymes and genes that control that, in fact, contribute to a series of different diseases, uh, including cancer, uh, as well as type 2 diabetes. And so the main focus uh, of this current story from the lab uh, is actually in trying to understand how a widely used, uh, in fact, the most widely used type 2 diabetes drug in the world, a drug called metformin, works, uh, and how it regulates processes in the liver in order to regulate blood glucose. But in order for you to, uh, for me to explain what the new finding is and how metformin might work, first I need to explain a little bit about how blood glucose is regulated in our bodies in general. So blood glucose levels uh, in our body are kept constant by two different hormones that oppose each other. So uh, when during the day, when we're taking in food, snacks, hamburgers, anything we want, uh, it is actually the nutrients from that and the sugar from that that supplies our body with the energy that it needs. And in particular, the brain really relies on glucose uh, as a source of energy to keep uh, the brain alive. Of course, then when we're sleeping, or if we're fasting, if we haven't had food for more than four to six hours, then uh, you aren't taking in enough glucose uh, to actually keep the brain alive. So the body actually has a unique uh, mechanism, and in fact the liver is the only tissue really that can make its own glucose from scratch. So there are particular enzymes that are only expressed in your liver cells that actually can make uh, glucose from scratch, and that goes into the bloodstream and keeps your brain alive. And so there's a hormone that's released that actually triggers your liver to make that blood, uh, to make that blood glucose, and that hormone is called glucagon. Uh, when we eat a meal, there's another hormone that's released that says, hey, you just ate a meal, and that hormone is actually called insulin. And so we know more about how insulin works, because actually in diabetic patients, uh, insulin no longer works. And in fact, the cells of your body become resistant to insulin working properly, and you get sky high levels of blood glucose in your blood, and that leads to a whole series of other clinical complications. So the goal of all diabetes therapeutics is actually to try to reduce blood glucose and try to restore some sensitivity to insulin. Now the major thing that insulin is known to regulate in the liver that controls glucose production is a protein switch called FOXO. And it's known that insulin inhibits the activity uh, of this FOXO protein, and that prevents FOXO from turning on the enzymes that regulate blood glucose. What's not as well understood is how the fasting hormone actually signals to the liver cells to start making blood glucose. Uh, and it's fact in that area that these new findings sit. So in trying to understand how metformin works, we had previously found that one of the major targets of metformin in liver uh, is an enzyme called AMPK. And, and AMPK is an enzyme that passes a signal just like passing a baton in a relay race. And we wanted to understand who more of the runners that AMPK was passing the baton to in the liver in particular were. And that's how the study started. And we made the discovery uh, that AMPK was passing the signal to another type of enzyme called an HDAC, a histone deacetylase. And these HDAC enzymes remove a different type of chemical modification of proteins, and we wanted to understand what those targets were. But the uh, key breakthrough that really led to most of this work was when my graduate student, Maria Mihailova, made the discovery that, in fact, looking at where the HDAC enzymes were in the cell, that when she treated with the fasting hormone, that the HDAC enzymes rapidly moved into the nucleus of the cell, which is where the genes and the DNA are. So that suggested that, in fact, in response to this fasting hormone, the HDACs were probably regulating the activity uh, of some uh, genes. And, and we had no idea what, and this was completely unexpected, that there would be a signal so quickly uh, from this fasting hormone. So then collaborating with Ron Evans' lab here at the Salk, we set out to decode what was being regulated. And to our surprise, it actually led back to those same enzymes that actually create uh, glucose from scratch inside the liver. So that suggested that, in fact, the fasting hormone was regulating these HDAC enzymes to control blood glucose production. One prediction of that is that if we had a way to lower the levels of these HDAC enzymes, 
or to a, a drug that could bind to them and block their activity that you might be able to lower blood glucose levels. So the next thing we did was to try to test that in a series of mouse models of type 2 diabetes. Uh, and in fact, remarkably, uh, lowering the levels of these HDAC enzymes in four different mouse models of two, type 2 diabetes dramatically lowered their blood glucose. Uh, I cut it more than in half, almost back down to normal levels. Uh, so this says that in type 2 diabetic patients where blood glucose are, levels are sky high, that if we just lower the activity of these new enzymes that we didn't even know were found there in the liver, that this might be a new therapeutic angle. So this was a really uh, striking, striking result. Um, and it also suggests then if you had a drug, a compound that could inhibit these enzymes uh, pharmacologically, that you could perhaps use that to treat metabolic disease. Now, that's even more interesting than just another possible diabetes target because, in fact, over the course of the past five years, uh, many pharmaceutical companies have been testing to see whether they could use drugs against HDAC enzymes for the treatment of cancer. And so it's become appreciated uh, that some HDAC inhibitors might work in certain types of cancers. Now, we don't necessarily think that the exact drugs that work to treat some of those cancers will necessarily be the same ones that will work for treating diabetes. But the fact of the matter is, is that many of these companies will have created compounds and trying to make the perfect one for cancer. They may have other ones sitting on the shelf that weren't great for that indication, but may in fact turn out to be uh, wonderful for lowering blood glucose. So we think that this will really spur uh, a new resurgence of interest in creating new compounds uh, to treat diabetes. So taken all together, what started off as a search for trying to understand how this age-old diabetes drug might work has now led us to a new possible treatment for diabetes, and, and we're really excited about that. I should say that none of this work uh, would have been possible uh, without a, a unique collaboration uh, which was fostered uh, between the prime graduate student in my lab, Maria, and members from both uh, the Evans lab and the Montmany labs here at the Salk. Uh, and in large part, this work really benefited from very generous funding from the Leona and Harry Helmsley Charitable Trust, who gave money specifically to the Salk Institute and to these labs to establish a center to study and diagnose new basic research into the cause and treatment of diabetes and metabolic syndrome. So I'm very excited and very proud uh, that this work concretely and some of the instruments that were bought and the funding was used to fund this work and uh, within a handful of years here we've found something more exciting than we could have possibly imagined. So uh, I'd like to thank that and the people involved and thank you for your attention.